Hello everybody, my name is Run and I make content focused on RPG Maker, mostly event related tutorials and tips. A lot of the tutorial content I make on event commands are shorts and a few people have been asking for more long form content covering these topics so I figured I would give it a shot. In this series, I'll be going over what events and event commands are, how to use them, different things you would create with events like NPCs, treasure chests, doors, quests, as many of the basics as I possibly can. Before we get started with this first episode, I'll go ahead and say that a lot of these concepts, not all, but a lot, will also apply to older versions of RPG Maker. There have been a lot of commands that have been added from version to version, but a lot of the fundamentals go all the way back to the RPG Makers of old. Now let's get into it. To start this series off, we're going to do a general overview of the event page. There are two icons at the top of the editor here. The one on your left is the map editor. This is where you'll be creating any of the visual environments or areas for the player to walk on. Things like your world map, your towns, your rooms and houses, castles, dungeons, all of the places that you'll create in your game will be here in this mode. I'm not going to be talking much about mapping in this series because quite frankly, I'm not the best mapper in the world, but there are several YouTube channels out there that focus on that and helping to develop your mapping technique and showing you best mapping practices. Next to the map button is what we're going to be focusing on, and that is the event mode. When you click this button, you'll see a grid layered over your map. Every single tile you see here can be an event. Now, what is an event? An event is anything that happens in your game. Unless you just want the player to walk around the map and do literally nothing else, you'll be using events. Events are going to be your NPCs, they're going to contain your character dialogue and your cutscenes, they'll transition you from map to map, they'll be your treasure chests or animated torches and dungeons. Anytime something is actively going on in your game, it's going to be happening because of an event. To create an event, simply double click any of the tiles you see and this will open the event editor for that event. Now if you just press the OK button here, you'll see a smaller square within the tile that shows that there is now an event here. If you set an event graphic, it'll show the graphic for that event. Just to show this off, let's choose a character graphic really quick. Now when we press OK, you can see the character graphic here in the preview. For this first episode, we're just going to be doing a general overview of the event page. If we start explaining a lot of these things in depth now without showing a bunch of examples, it can get a little confusing. I'll go ahead and give a surface level explanation of these options, but if you learn by seeing, don't worry, we'll be going over these in depth in future episodes. If you look in the upper left here, this is the event name. You should basically always be giving your events a name. If it's a treasure chest, name it chest. If it's an NPC named Sam, then name it NPC Sam. This is really important when you get to making larger maps with more and more events. You don't want to be playing Where's Waldo in a crowded town trying to find Sam among 20 other NPCs, door events, and everything else. That's where this list to the left here comes in handy. When you name your event like we have here, you can double click it from the list to bring it right up without having to search the map for it. The next category is note. You can use this for yourself to give some insight to the event, but this is mostly here to be used by plugins. I would recommend using comments to leave yourself notes anyways, which we'll get into in the future. Next to notes, you'll see a few options for managing your event pages. Everything you see here from the conditions to the contents are on this event page. Let's change a few conditions here and add some content. If I then click new event page, you'll see it create a brand new page within the same event and reset all the conditions and the contents. This enables an event to do multiple things depending on various conditions. For instance, this page can execute when self switch A is on and this page can execute when self switch B is on. Again, we'll get into examples of that in the future and how you would use that. You can also copy an event page to paste it inside the same event or a different one. You can use delete page to delete the page entirely or just use clear page to erase the contents and reset the conditions. 
Since we've mentioned conditions a few times, let's go ahead and talk about them. Conditions are underneath the name and note category in the event window. This category is named well because these are conditions that must be true in order for the contents of a particular event page to be active. For instance, let's go to the second page and check the condition self switch A. Let's go ahead and add sprites for both pages as well. If self switch A is on, the second page will be the active page and this sprite will be the one you see on the map. The first page will be ignored unless self switch A is off. If self switch A is not on, this page is the one that will be active and this is the sprite that you'll see. So again, if self switch A is on, the second page's contents will be what activates when the trigger is used. If self switch A is off, the first page's contents will be what activates when its trigger is used. Since I mentioned it and they're closely tied together, let's talk about triggers. Triggers are what you need to do to get the active event page's contents to happen. So if it's set to action button, the player must press the action button to make the contents of the event execute as long as the conditions are met. Let me add some contents to both page one and two to make it easier to differentiate. So with our example here, both pages are set to the action button. The first page says I'm showing page one text. The second page says blah, 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 blah. If self switch A is on, this is the sprite that you'll see on the map. And when the player presses the action button next to this sprite, you'll see the text blah, 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 blah. If self switch A is off, this sprite will be the one that you see on the map. And when the player presses the trigger next to this sprite, it'll show the text I'm showing page one text. Switches are off by default. So the only way they would be turned on is if we turn them on ourselves within an event. How switches function will be a lot easier to understand when we make our first treasure chest event. Underneath the conditions category, we have the events image. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is the image that is used to represent the event on the map. To the right of the image is the autonomous movement category. This is where you'll control how the event moves. This will have its own episode, but for now I'll explain you have four types of movement you can choose from, including a custom movement style that you can create yourself. Speed is how fast the character moves from one tile to the next. Frequency is how often the character moves to the next tile. Our last two categories are priority and options. Priority is very straightforward. If an event is below characters, you can step on it. Same as characters, you can bump into it or walk next to it, but not go through it. And above characters means you can go under it. The options category is tied in pretty close to movement. So we'll go over examples of it when we talk about movement, but I'll quickly explain these options. Walking means the character will use its walking animation when it moves around. Otherwise, it'll just kind of slide with this graphic. Stepping means the character will look like it's stepping in its idle animation instead of standing completely still. Direction fix means that it will always be facing the same direction when moving. For example, facing forward and moving to the right, which would look weird for an NPC but is useful for certain types of events. Through means the event can go through other events and the player even if the priority is set to same as characters. Before we go, I'm going to give you a tip that is going to help you throughout the entirety of the RPG Maker engine. Anytime that you don't know what something does, hover your cursor over it and read the tooltip. This is one of the best pieces of software that I've used in terms of giving you genuinely helpful tooltips. So anytime that you're confused about something, hover your cursor over it and see if that description will help you understand what it does. And I think that's going to do it for this first episode. In the next episode, I think we're going to be covering event movement. So we'll be going over autonomous movement and options and examples of all the different kinds of movement and options. If you all like this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know that you want to see more content like this. And if there's a particular thing that you would like to explore, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for hanging out today and I'll see you next time.